Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello, and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Mike. Yo. It's it's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Yeah, we we normally record on Mondays, but we actually both lost power yesterday. <laughs> I don't know what your experience has been, but ever since I moved to the greater DC metropolitan area, um, the power grid here seems much less stable than previous places I've lived. Um, so- so um my experience has been the opposite at least in northern virginia um all of our power lines are buried i mean in fairness and... all the important stuff is in or more towards you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean we got we got the pentagon we got a bunch of like intel agencies and server farms and stuff out here so um it is a very intentionally pretty resilient power grid but yeah uh all of our stuff is buried we have a ton of like cheap nuclear power and other stuff like that so um this is actually the first time i think that we lost power that i can think of in recent memory it's not like it never happens you know it probably happens like once every few years but it's rare i I definitely wake up all the time and my like clock on my uh, stove is like blinking um because it (laughs) like i clearly lost lost power power. overnight Yeah, yeah, yeah uh like that that's like at least five or six times a year um now in fairness that might be more of a building apartment issue i think than a power grid issue but that's that's fair yeah Yeah. i don't know exactly how the power grid works but yeah uh, we almost never lose power so yesterday for it to have happened was really unusual but anyway long story short it is tuesday because we now have power yeah and we can record this podcast so we had uh I guess this this would be the first like sizable tournament since Commandos and Range Troopers came out, right? Rocky Top, which was in Tennessee, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? I believe so. Yeah. Yes, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Um, so we have some results to discuss from that because again, this is you know this is the first like major release really we've had in a while. Uh. So Yo, Kyle, we got Geonosians and Inquisitors, and they made waves. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> man, I wish Geonosians were better. I think actually Inquisitors are decent, but the Empire Shell is not, which we've talked about before, and will come up again on this podcast because we're going to talk a little bit about how range troopers don't did bury the lead, my dude. <laughs> um, but yeah. I... This clearly a much more impactful release than the last couple, let's put it that way. At least based on the results. So we'll talk about that. We might spitball some counter meta stuff and we'll see where this conversation takes us. So uh this was a five round tournament. It was. Uh which there were, yeah, there ended up being multiple exos, I think, because uh they, they didn't quite get I think it, it was probably limited on on the number of rounds that were available and they wanted to bring in as much players as possible yeah so. yeah but there's nothing wrong with that um you know this wasn't i don't think this was a gt granted is that the right acronym now gc i, I believe G- it is G- gts i think they're grand tournaments yeah okay uh i don't think it was that i think this was just a convention tournament so yeah five rounds whatever i guess that's fine um but yeah kentucky dan from crit to block was one of the five O's with this was basically a Rex clone commando clones list. Um I guess we we can talk about that one real quick in detail since he was 
undefeated. We're not going to talk in detail about like all of the top eight, but we will go through them sort of generally. Um, I think there's a couple notable things I'd like to. There talk are about some, there. yeah. So this was he called it two clone two clone Mendos. There's actually only two clone commandos in this list. They both have HQ uplink. Um, but he has he has full arcs with Echo. He has an arc strike with a normal dude, and he's got a phase two with a mortar and a medic. Phase ones with an RPS and boil. Phase ones with fives, which I like, by the way. And a medic, uh, a clone commander with recon intel, and then Rex with recon intel and aggressive tactics. I actually think yeah. this is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a. Uh, it's not exactly where I think I was planning on starting with like a um, generic clone line kind of centered around clone commandos. I think they're just like efficient enough that maybe and flexible enough to allow you to kind of actually not take a Jedi anymore. Um, yep. But uh, he's still got some very expensive units in here uh, for what he's doing, which I thought was interesting. Um, particularly like the full arc squad with Echo and Prepared Supplies is like, it's not an inexpensive unit. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, that's a, uh, what is that? A hundred and, it's 113 points. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's a lot. Um like I sort of almost wish that that was just like a third clone commander unit with HQ uplink and then take the 30 points you net out of that and throw it somewhere else. But uh I suspect the reason that there are two clone commanders here is actually for a reason that's not super apparent and face up when you look at this list. I suspect he's scouting both. Like, those clone commander units are there to scouting party after they infiltrate. Which is a thing you can do. Yes. Uh, As, I, I suspect. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I haven't seen it played, but that's just, like, something that, like, jumps off the page of me after kind of looking at this in depth. Um, there's not really a ton of other great units to, like, scout with scouting party in this list. Uh you know, core units are like fine, but um, it's it's pretty easy to like get very close to your opponent's objectives with infiltrate and a scout two. Sorry, yeah, scout scout two move uh, in this setup. Yeah, and he also has the RPS with Boyle, and Boyle has scout himself, so he can actually set up like a turn one fire support where you're slapping an RPS on top of a clone commando pool, whether that's. The rage, rage two four pool Mando or the push. rage two pool, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> which, eight which black is dice be... plus the fire support, right? Yeah. And and because they've got uplinks, you're also netting target, um, right, right. So you're also like can definitely go first, like you're definitely and because you have a clone commander, like you can basically play a one pip off the jump, um, and then set up a, a fire support. And still do whatever else you were gonna do, you know. Um, yeah. So that that's a what's that? Smells like Rex Star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and zoning is a lot harder too when you can do a scout move after a ginormous scout move after infiltrating. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, well, I, I'd be interested to know if if you play that out now my uh assessment so far is that clone commandos aggressively infiltrating seems pretty good uh they're really hard to kill yeah really hard to kill even if you're shooting them with basically everything <laughs> yeah and they don't need support for that that's just because of their guitar and armor so as, lo as long as they've got their token i think yeah like if they're not in range of the token i think they that conversation changes very rapidly um Sure, but you've got if you're taking multiples and you have multiple tokens and a range one radius when you're doing it like with your own unit, that's you can cover a pretty wide area with that. Like you're, if you're outside range of your own token for defensive reasons, then you've messed up. Yeah, and I think just looking at his battle deck, um, I feel pretty confident that he was doing this because he's got in in the most non clone way ever this man's got breakthrough in his bath deck <laughs> yeah i mean he's got nine activations yeah which so, is like 
you know, it's not great on breakthrough. No, particularly for clones. Like, but when you're starting, you know, range one away from their deployment zone, <laughs> with multiple units. So that yeah, uh, I, that conversation gets a little bit more interesting, I suppose. Yeah, I think the only there's there's basically three units in this list that don't natively have scout, and you're using scouting party on two of them. So. Uh, of 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 the nine units in this list, eight of them are scouting and or infiltrating in some fashion. And I actually think the the breakthrough in the objective deck play, um, I think is actually maybe opened for a more uh, larger conversation in regards to clone commandos, and that that objective all of a sudden is very reasonable to score in basically any circumstance if you have anywhere more than one clone commando um, on most planets. Yeah, because if they make it into the late game with their guitar and we're still up, I mean, good luck. Well, <laughs> not only that, but like if you're infiltrating and go in like somewhat last, you can start the game in a situation where you're basically scoring already yeah. uh, in, a, in a lot of these situations um, or threatening to score with a kind of impunity and th they have to kill you, um, which is probably going to mean that like multiple of their units can't score. So I don't know. I think it sort of sets up a weird breakthrough dichotomy and that um, they, it kind of, it makes that an objective that clone lists can actually play and feel good about, which is interesting. Yeah. Um because his battle deck is basically the same otherwise for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I like it. Kentucky Dan always finding different ways to do something that's like I mean, he's he's the one that did the pike spam with the prepared supplies, which was like a slight twist on the on the normal uh you know, Pike spam with the capos. So He's, speaking of, he hasn't he hasn't left it at home. Those full arcs have prepared supplies too. <laughs> yes, <I know. laughs> Which uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess because if you don't have five points to spend on anything else, that's fine. <laughs> but all right, the other X and O was Tyler Carnes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. running experimental droids. Yeah. Uh, notably, all the BXs here have impact grenades. Yes, and uh, and he has the rockets on the B ones and the B two HAs on the B twos. So there's actually quite a bit of impact in this list. Yes, um, which is uh, I think shoring up one of their larger weaknesses. Yep. I'm not sold on if it's. I like the rockets. I'm not sure. I love the grenades. Um, it's they're cheap. It's a hedge against buses, basically. I think. Yeah, it, it is like four black, two red, lethal one, with which, impact four. With impact four, yeah. I guess, I guess that's not terrible. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And it, it, if something it, like all, all the armor that experimental droids cares about countering is stuff that has to get close to you. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah, I like it. I dig it. It's this is a nice little twist on experimental droids. Um, I, um, I'm curious if it would be like enough against the double boss shield lists. Um, I'm I'm not sure that it would be. You know, B1 rockets are not exactly the most reliable of anti armor counters. Um, but. Yeah, Maybe. tough to say. I mean, I yeah. think if you get the commandos on target, the impact grenades, you definitely could take a bus off the table in a single turn. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I mean, if all your impact grenades are in range, it's impact 12 from those alone, and then you have impact 8 from the other stuff. Yeah. So that's impact 20, basically. Uh, if you can get everything on target at once, which, you know, against a very close a bus is actually not that unreasonable. Yeah, and notably, they get to buy an extra range band for grenades, kind of with the speed three, uh, move. Uh, speed three move. Yeah, yep. That you normally wouldn't have access to. So, right. And if they don't need to do that, then you can throw some extra dice in there. Yeah, or the name or whatever. 
probably a bad aim token. It's fairly piercing, full, piercing, yeah. piercing armor yeah. seems good. Yep. All right, you want to hit some of these other top eight? Yeah, yeah. Um, Austin Miller coming in with the Darth Vader lat. Yeah. Good. Golf clap. Um... <laughs> Austin getting back into the swing of things. Yeah. Taking, taking I feel like he's stuff and went in with it as usual. Yeah, I feel like he, don't get me wrong. I don't want to poo poo Vader lat because we'll get to this maybe a little bit later in the show. I think there is something to we already talked about transports a couple of shows ago, but there is something to the concept of taking like an aggro skew against some of these lists. Um, but I do feel like Austin is handicapping himself a little bit with. Oh, he's totally this. kneecapping himself. Audience, <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't let Kyle tell you Vader Lat is good. Uh, it's, I'm not, just, <laughs> it's not. It's not good. I'm not saying it would be my choice. I, but I, I'm not saying it should be anybody's <laughs> choice. Like it is not good. It will. It's one of those things where, like, if you're gonna win, you're gonna win. And if you're playing against somebody who's got a good list that can actually deal with being put in rough situations, like you're gonna lose. Yeah, and notably with the lat and Vader, if if somebody can one shot your lat, which with the addition of clone commandos onto the scene is like a real thing that can happen. Yeah, uh, uh, Vader's in trouble. <laughs> I mean, you don't even need to one shot it really. You, if you can kill it before he gets out. Right. Yeah. You're totally. feeling good about it. Yeah. Like which is, and which is pretty reasonable with a list that features clone command in it. It's pretty reasonable for most lists, I would argue. Yeah. Um and it's just the issue with the Vader Lat list is that you've got Vader, you've got the Lat, and then like you have to take three core units and then you pretty much don't have anything else. Like Yeah. I mean he did get up to ten activations. He actually the, I think the most notable thing about this list is that he ran it with triple speeders. Yes. That's because he's got five core units that have no heavy weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean this is this is an objective skew, right? It's you've got Vader for your hostage slash center control objectives, and then you've got your three bikes for bombing run breakthrough or whatever. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like old school blizzard without the gun line component. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. I um you know, it'll win games. Yeah. And obviously Austin's good. Austin won this event last year in addition to many other ones. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I think you could give Austin a, a potato and he'd, he'd do pretty well. So, uh, I, I would suggest, I think he should probably start playing Jin Hong. Um, <laughs> you know, because uh, that's the thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we had Isaac Pendley playing... Uh, Full arcs and clone commandos, um, kind of like a five o first style sort of situation. No named commander operatives. Um, uh, some more impact grenades here. We had JJ Wood playing Yoda, Chewie, triple clone commandos. Um, notably, <laughs> he's got clone commandos with uh, comms jammers and EM p droid poppers so the that most, is an interesting combination the most flexible of i mean uh in fairness uh clone commando is infiltrating with a combination of like guidance um they can probably get up real close real fast um yeah and i don't know yeah the, the Just, thing about clone commandos is they're dangerous at all ranges there very much so yeah. including in melee by the way where they have the same profile as a normal wookie warrior so <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> um and then we've got nathan morgan playing uh yoda padme clone commandos um basically yoda may just with commandos instead of arcs yep Turns out, who would have thought that would have been good? I'm going to save this next one for the last because I think it's the most interesting one. Um, and then we've got Obi-Wan Padme, Triple Clone Commandos. No, you know, 
Uh, I'm the one that I have seen here, Mike. <laughs> triple cloak, clone commandos, clone yeah. commandos everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then I think the the one that I thought was the most interesting was actually a eleven activations uh, Kashyyyk battle force that was uh, running uh, triple fluttercraft, chewy. Uh, six Wookiee warriors, which two were Kashyyyk defenders, and then one naked full arc, um, for sixty six points. Which, uh, I've actually been had been toying <laughs> before Clone Commandos came out. Uh-huh. Um, I I had been toying around with potentially playing full full arcs naked, uh, in some efficiency lists. I just never really got around to trying it. I'm glad somebody is kind of messing around with it, um, because it is actually kind of an efficient unit for its cost. Um, yeah. It range two. Right. Yeah. It, not at other ranges, but at range two, yes. So um yeah. Uh interesting tournament. Uh Republic coming out on top pretty significantly. I would like to I guess yeah, qual- yeah, I mean six of the top eight Republic, right? Yes, I would like to qualify this a little bit in that uh, Republic was the most played faction by a significant margin. Yeah. It was 19 Republic, and then the next closest was Empire at 13. Um, And then Separatists were at 8. I don't know how many of them were EXT, but I imagine that probably not a a ton. um, Yeah, there actually was not a ton of EXD in this tournament, um, which is a little bit surprising. And um, I think... Is it, it is it surprising? I mean, I think it's surprising from like a meta perspective, I guess. Yeah, they're not the new thing. Um, there's not like a lot of droid players generally. <laughs> yes. Compared to the other factions. Um, so yeah, I guess it's not that surprising. I, I think my takeaway there is that... You know, one of one of the undefeated players was still experimental droids. He had, by the way, Tyler had almost thirty three hundred kill points across five games, which is for more than six hundred points. That's between six and seven hundred points on average. It's basically, game. tabling your opponent every game. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> um, I nobody mean, nobody else was particularly close. Kentucky Dan had like one almost three thousand, which is actually pretty close to six hundred. But um, yeah. That, I mean, that's a lot. I'm not surprised, just so we're clear on this. Like, that's what a EXT does. <laughs> it just. I, I'm not either. I, I think, I, I guess my my takeaway here is people looking at this and saying, like, oh, clones are back. Clones are dominating now that they have clone commanders. I, look, clearly clone commanders are good. Um, But I think the, like, clone versus experimental droids matchup is kind of untested still. Uh, I, I'd like to see that in action because I'm not actually sure who comes out on top there given how thoroughly experimental droids wiped the floor with all manner of clones for this. Not close. Uh, not <laughs> close. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that clone commandos actually changed that equation that much. They definitely help with, particularly with the Katan armor, frankly, about like not getting smoked by that range three BX pool, yeah, um, um, which is which is relevant because a lot of experimental droids kind of revolves around just channeling all your offense through those BX droids, and you're taking three really big, really strong shots a turn, and Katarn armor just says, nah. <laughs> so there could be something to that. They can also plank pretty reliably at range five too. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm I not sure. What, I'm not sure what to do with it right now. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, um, if you're taking clone commandos, <laughs> for good or for worse, uh, they are so cheap that there are going to be other things to shoot in your list <laughs> that are not clone commandos that are going to die to the BX droids. Yeah, that's uh, fair. You know, and unfortunately, uh, I just the the commandos don't really make them safer in that capacity. So uh, if if the commandos are actually doing decent damage against the BX droids. Great. I think you got to get to range two in order to facilitate that. I don't think range four shots into um, EXD are where you want to be. Frankly. No, you're you're not going to overpower their repair that way. No, or their uh, shields. 
Yeah, that's the thing. Like the first shot, like strips the shields. Then you're like, okay, well, your cover and your shields took my first shot. And then your cover and your repair took my second shot, and your cover and repair took my third shot. You know, right. so it's yeah. like, um, you got you got to be at range two. You got to they got to be in like no cover sort of situations, which is possible to set up with commandos. You know, um, there's been I will say commandos definitely can set up just positioning wise out of cover shots all the time which is interesting yeah. um but yeah i think i generally agree with you that i don't think the results of this tournament say anything really in result as far as like the exd clone meta matchup uh kind of brawl goes i will say that uh <laughs> there was a lot of i i just quickly uh per use the uh separatist lists here um there was tyler was the only one playing exd but there are yeah. a number of people here playing spiders with ion cannons really yes Interesting. Um, now obviously the none of them got the matchup or they wanted or they got the matchup and still lost i haven't looked at like who tyler played um but yeah there was eight separatists and i think at least three of them were playing ion spiders uh so interesting that's a that's a notable thing uh that will maybe segue further into our uh conversation once we move off this topic uh <laughs> <laughs> um but spoilers yeah. mike spoilers i think i think the lead was already buried a long time ago um, <laughs> but i mean i don't think it's a surprise to either one of us that all of a sudden full arcs are basically nowhere to be seen and cloak commandos are everywhere yeah we shouldn't say the full arcs are nowhere to be seen because actually several of these commando lists also featured full arcs okay sorry the majority of these lists have taken the full arcs out and just throw up okay. commandos in. that's fair yeah um there definitely is still a couple people playing them but i suspect that once we refine these lists and kind of like grind them down into the the best version of themselves the remaining full arcs will also become like the third clone commandos in a lot of these lists yeah that's fair um yeah i don't know clone commandos good i just you started, know i just started putting mine together i finally got my finally got my sprues here nice so I got to, uh, we ranted a lot last week. Yes. I got to take some stuff back. Okay. Go I think, on. I think I got to be fair. Uh, you and, and a couple other people, uh, notably, um, Brian, uh, we bear, um, DM me and we're like, Hey, I think the clone commandos are a little bit more flexible and posing than you were saying okay um and i think that that is i i have two things to say about that i think first of all they are not very flexible unless you're like decent with a hobby knife you got to do some cutting you got to do i would say a significant amount of cutting okay in my experience i don't know I'm not I'm not super great at it. I was able to put together 12 clone commandos that all had different poses. Okay. And I swapped out a bunch of the torsos and the legs, but it required cutting and it is going to require some green stuff once I get around to mm, it. Okay. Um and I they look decent. They look good. Um, no arguments there. I know that last week I was very down on it. I still am upset about the amount of plastic in that box, but maybe that's a that's another topic altogether. So I, I just wanted to roll back on. I do think it's fair though when we're comparing them. Like, look, I've also been putting together the BX Commando list. Mm. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for a sort of inherent posability or customization in a kit for an army scale game like Legion. Where you have a bunch of uh, schmoes, yeah. Um, where you don't have to do cutting and use putty and stuff like that to make them look different from each other, um, like especially because, I mean, like ball joints, I get that those are like harder for newer newer hobbyists to manage, 
but peg joints are not and you don't have to make them all keyed like that's the issue right the all of the cutting i had to do i didn't i didn't actually cut any of the material that was actually part of the piece it was all pegs yeah all the all the keyed stuff basically so that you yeah, can spot yeah. it somewhere else totally yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was all pegs that i had to cut i don't think i cut any material that was not a peg yeah um i mean stuff doesn't have to be keyed right like if you the stuff on the sprue is labeled which is helpful you know a b c d whatever for which which miniature it's quote unquote supposed to go on so if somebody wants to like assemble the kit how it's you know quote unquote supposed to be assembled they just go by letter and they follow the build instructions and even if it's just a regular unkeyed peg they just slot it into the hole which is super easy um, even if you don't have a lot of experience but if someone wants to do arm swaps or leg swaps or whatever then they can also easily do that without cutting because you just take unit a's arms and put them on pose b right and that's essentially what i did with the bx trades um each of those boxes builds seven miniatures and i ended up with 21 completely different poses without having to do any cutting um yeah because they all just just through arm swaps pretty much right uh they're all peg joints peg joints sorry um peg ball same thing yeah so not only can you change like the angle of the arm but i'm talking about even like I, i mean each dude also comes with in many cases like three different arm options right like you each guy is like all right here's a shield option here's a just holding a gun with two hands option here's a sword option and then you also have your you know your two heavies and your unilator with the binoculars um and each of those guys also has like you know a sword option and a normal not holding whatever thing option and some of them even have like extra random empty fists that you can put on one side or another if you want to have like a dude holding a gun in one hand and a f- and nothing in the other. So it's, you know, or putting a shield in one hand and have nothing in the other and put the gun on his back. Like these are all things that you can easily do with minimal to no cutting with the BX Droid kit. And I don't think it would be that, I don't think it's that unfriendly of a new player kit. Um, and I'd love to see more kits. Yeah, I'm glad that you were able to do some cutting to make the commandos different. Um, I definitely, I when we had that conversation last week, I had only put together one squad, and um, yeah. I was definitely lamenting how the rest of them were going to go together, and I was encouraged by you and others to take the leap, which is great. Uh, and it definitely, you know, my my guy pumping the fist in my last two squads, both standing instead of kneeling, which is, okay. you know... Um, and I've got a guy with like two, you know, uh, two, two blasters, pistols. so you know, yeah. kind of, you know, guns of Ken Bow and, um, and uh, yeah, they look cool. Um, but it definitely required some effort. And if I hadn't put together thousands of miniatures before this, I probably would have been a little bit like, oh man, I don't really want to cut my miniatures, <laughs> you know, like, and I don't blame, I don't blame people for feeling that way. Yeah, because if you mess up cutting, it's it's kind of over. It's, it's yeah, it's difficult to fix. Like yeah. sometimes you can use green stuff, but not everybody has that or knows how to use it. And even, I mean, I, I've been doing this for twenty seven years at this point, and I I still hate using green stuff. I avoid it if I because I can I can never get it to look right. I just use it to fill gaps, man. Like and that's that's yeah. pretty much it um and like, even then it's like still it's tough like, it's yeah tough. um but like yeah i just like i'm using it to like fill you know cracks where like the hip doesn't like perfectly meet the the leg you know because the joint was a little weird yeah um yeah i'm not i'm de- i'm certainly not like crafting like pouches and belts and stuff out of you know some of the stuff people do with that is wild um, yeah yeah crafting i've seen people craft like clothing and stuff yeah so I, I don't i don't know how people do that it's crazy all right well let's um should we should we spitball a couple counter meta hold up thanks hold hang, up. no okay all right so i did want to talk about the thing that is markedly markedly missing 
Oh, okay. Yeah, Rob sorry. I, in in my brain, we results. talked about this already yes. uh, because it's okay. been talked about, <laughs> but not not yet recording. So, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so where are them range troopers at, Kyle? Everybody telling me that they're super good. And I've been over here in our like chats for the last couple of weeks being like, yeah, I don't know about these range troopers. Like they're a fine unit, but Empire still sort of sucks. And I gotta be honest with you. Uh uh this does not bode well for the range troopers first first outing. Uh you're not wrong. I mean, there were range troopers at this tournament. I don't know. Look, I, I think they're a good unit. Um, they're just not. They're just not in a good faction. <laughs> um, Empire, Empire has the misfortune of being reliant on red saves, and otherwise having like cheap red save units that don't have other support or defensive tech. And yeah, it just that just doesn't fly right now. So because you can, you know, there are other factions notably clones and then some specifically experimental droids that can not only stack a bunch of defensive tech on top of their own red saves but stack a bunch of long range pierce in there also to deal with other people's red saves so yeah sorry empire hashtag bring on the mud troopers <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah at least maybe give them some cheap white saves um i think that'd be fine i yeah i don't know I don't know what the fix is for Empire other than making the game less about all these defense stacking white saves. I, I will say that when Empire could stack like long range high velocity, that was a thing that worked pretty well against clones, but snipers are just they're terrible now. <laughs> so um yeah, they're not with, with, yeah, between between the cover changes and the wound allocation changes, they're they're Obi Wan Kenobi. And also Soresu working against high velocity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's several reasons, but those are numerous ones. And yeah, just I don't know. It's it's unfortunate. I love me some Empire. I still to this day have the best tournament record with Empire. But um, I look, I'd be afraid to play him right now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, Empire players. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Austin was obviously playing Lat Vader, but the next Empire player, who notably was playing Range Troopers, um, came in 12th, Sean Siebert at 3-2. and two. Um, And then, you know, there was three Empire in the top 18, um, despite being the second most populous faction. Yeah, uh, not, not good. That's it. Yeah, not a, not ideal. Sure. Yeah, I'd be curious to see the win rates from this tournament. Well, EXD, uh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a <quick> player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, An increase uh, from last time. Yes. <laughs> Their average has gone up. <laughs> Who would have okay. thunk it? Yep. 93% or whatever it was against clones wasn't enough. Yep. Um, all right, let's uh quickly spitball some kind of out of choices because I I have one spitball here that I'm sure you're gonna crush like a grape. So bring it on. Uh, my spitball idea here is a combination of poison and ion. I already for two reasons. Like Continue. <laughs> yeah, poison because poison gets around Katarn armor because of the timing, right? If you do one wound, you're actually doing two wounds, but you're doing them in two separate steps. Um, and you can't spend your Katarn armor on that. Okay. So you only have to wound a clone unit with poison weapon twice to kill it. Sorry, clone commando unit. And uh, how how are you intending to deliver said poison, poison antidote into <laughs> said clone army? <laughs> I'm Look, Mike, curious. modern problems require <laughs> modern solutions. I agree. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is essentially saturation. You can make B1s with iron cannons and uh, BX droids with the access charges are cheap enough that you can make a 12 activation droid list that includes repair bots 
and has shields on the BX droids. Um, where Is you have strike team BXs, they are strike team BXs. Okay. Um, and it, so that's nine poison activations. You can also include two ion spiders and a super tactical droid. So let me get this straight. Your game plan against clone commandos uh-huh. is to get B1s with a rad cannon to range two of a clone gun line and expect them to survive. I thought the clone commandos were infiltrating close to me already. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then two, I actually think that the axis bite is terrible. Like the absolutely... dice the dice are bad. You gotta hit you gotta hit like a lot of units with each one. Not only that, but the shield just strips the hit, the one hit that you like maybe get with the axis mine off the top. So they don't even have to roll dice. Well, this is why you don't three at once, Mike. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. We're living in a magic, magic fairy tale yes. <laughs> droid Christmas land. Or maybe you've already <laughs> shot them with the rad cannon. I see. So they have and or the iron spider, tokens. by the way, which flips the shield over. Okay. All right. So yeah. we're ta- we're taking the super expensive ion spider to strip the shield. It's not that but expensive. It's only then, eighty points. Okay, we're paying ten plus points over the cost of the clone commandos to strip the shield and do no damage. Gotcha. Uh, and then we're gonna hopefully get in there with the dioxis thing and blow up the mine and maybe hit two, three units. We're not gonna get the whole clone ball because the commandos are infiltrated, right? Yeah, I mean, you're just getting the commandos. Okay. <laughs> or maybe you're just shooting them with the red cans and you're using the mines against the clone ball. Right. Also works well against Obi Wan. You know, if, if Obi Wan takes a wound on Guardian or whatever, he's taken two. Um, so. Is that actually how that works? Yeah, that is how that works. Is you do not have to be the defender as long as you suffer a wound from an attack that includes, um, a poison weapon. And there, there's an FAQ on the forum on it. I double checked. Today I learned. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the one, the one <laughs> thing that Seresu doesn't break. <laughs> Poison. The one thing no one plays. The one thing, yeah, because it's mostly bad. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's a thought. Uh, I, I know that the delivery systems for those two keywords are generally, frankly, for the most part, with good reason, pretty inefficient. But, um, you know, Poison and Ion... Ion is for experimental droids mostly, but it also strips shields, which is good. Uh, but, you know, poison is something that gets around most of the quote unquote common clone defenses these days. So, I don't know. I think people that are used to their clone commandos just like not dying, um, you know, if they get shot twice by a rad cannon, and that's it. That's the clone unit. Uh, you know. And that 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 B one unit only costs fifty six points. So sure, you're definitely like trading up in that scenario if you can get a full clone commander unit for your B one unit. I guess I don't know. In my experience, you generally don't have to roll dice the first couple shots. So like the first couple rad cannon attacks probably bounce. Maybe, but, but but we also just got done talking about how clone commandos didn't need like clone defensive tech. That's fair. So if if people are doing that and they're essentially just cutting the defensive tech, a because it gets countered by other clone commandos because of high velocity, and b because they think they don't need it, then suddenly those poison weapons are actually like hitting home earlier than they would otherwise. Yeah, um, I th- I sort of think like this is where the flexibility of the commandos comes in. I think in that if you see your opponent has something that like I don't know might catch your commandos off, you just I don't know infiltrate them towards your way. So yeah, yeah, yeah I don't I don't know. Like um, you make it so that they have to fight the whole clone ball <laughs> while they're trying to poison your commandos. You know. Um, yeah. Look, I haven't tried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I like the ion spiders way more than I like the, the poison stuff, um, mainly because it hits CXD too. And I think that that's um despite what this tournament makes everything look like, and that you know, clone commandos are the big bad scary thing in the room. Um and uh in fairness, I think they are a big a big bad thing in the yeah. scary thing in the room. I don't think they're the big bad scary thing in the room. Yeah. Um I do think ion spiders are a great uh maybe not great but they are an 
answer to a lot of the lists that people are playing that are either EXT or are things that are kind of tailored to mess around with EXT. Ion like spiders, armor skews. Yeah. yeah, pretty great against buses, you know. Um, yep. Strip those shields too and make them so they can't move. Yeah, um, I've actually been looking at a lot of like land speeder, uh, ion, ion shenanigans just because, you know, you can like put some unstable astromechs on them and like fire their ion gun twice at range four and do some you can actually like lock down some units yeah. with some pretty shenanigans plays with those. Um, I don't know. Um, I think that's where that's where I would start. Lance Peters. Okay. I think Lance Peters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where where would you continue from there? <laughs> that's a great question because the rest of Re <laughs> Rebels is kind of kind of garbo. Um, I mean, you can't take Lance Peters and probably. You probably have to take R2 without 3PO at that point, just for the possibility of kind of doing putting him in a land speeder and buzzing him around the board. Yep. Um put Shriv in there. So he well, always has suppression. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, I definitely could see a situation where you're kind of like designing like a little bit of like a like R2 operative loop double land speeder sort of situation. Mm -hmm. Like kind of like the double bus situation, but you got land speeders instead. I don't think it's like nearly as good um they don't buy line of sight and they're not tough yes yeah um but they it does kind of give you the option to like flex depending on the matchup a little bit more right i think the luke bus list has kind of one mode and one mode only uh and that is to go forth block things and kill them whereas yeah. um the land speeders can sort of like be like okay we're gonna deliver loop this game or we're just gonna kind of act like you know range five uh batteries that were trying to not get killed you know um is that good enough yeah um the notably i think they've got enough armor on them if i'm recalling correctly to mose like what what is their armor is it three land speeders two two it's two yeah. it strips most of the bx shot at range five you know um which is not nothing um at range five yeah once you get to range three that's super dangerous oh we don't don't get to range three of the x commando yeah. droid and stay there unless you ion that unit into oblivion which is a possibility right um but yeah uh i don't know i think you know we entered into this conversation with like counter meta stuff that that's sort of where i'd be i don't think that that list stands up to republic jump very well yeah, I was trying to think of something that could handle both or potentially counter both. Um, uh, which is how, why I ended up on poison, but maybe that's barking up the wrong tree. I, don't know. I just, I, I don't think that the, the list that you just outlined can be DXD. Poison is very useless against droids. <laughs> yeah. And like the only things in the list that you just outlined they can do damage to the XD list or the ion spiders, which don't get me wrong, can like sort of do damage, but the ion spiders are more like, we're going to bring down your shields and then the rest of the list has to do yeah. damage. And mm. there's just nothing else in the list to actually kind of like deliver the coup de gras, you know? Yeah, maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree there and the answer is just like melee. Pair ion spiders with melee or something. Because that's the other thing that at least in theory, clone commandos are not great against because neither the shields nor the nor the Katarn armor works in melee, but you have to get there. Like melee you is even closer than range two, which is the range I was proposing for poison. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, I don't know. I mean commandos get eaten by lightsabers. They do. If actually if... I'm actually interested in running like the commando aggro Anakin list, where instead of using Anakin as a support Jedi, you just give him like force choke <laughs> and you just get him in there and start swinging his lightsaber. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure three phase ones Yoda, Anakin, triple club commando is a thing that fits. That'd be amazing if it fits. I, I, I feel like. 
pretty confident about that. Um, let's find let's find out. I need I need to know if this if this fits. Three clone commandos, three naked phase ones, Yoda and Anakin before any upgrades is seven thirty six. Okay. So um, so and that like once you slap a couple force pushes on there and you're like up to seven fifty six, but like you got forty points to play with for like additional upgrades on Yoda and Anakin. Um, and the luminous is still pretty good in that your like phase ones get to fire support your clone commandos and turn those pools into like kind of silly. Um, yeah, actually, all the force upgrades fit. Yeah, if you take burst, push, and reflexes on Yoda, and then you take choke, push, and endurance on Anakin, you still have 13 points after that for other things. Yeah um is it good i don't know uh but it is a thing you can do i guess you'd um, want to take c's on anakin probably um i don't so here's the thing with all the yoda anakin lists that i've seen c's is actually i think significantly less important because on all of the turns anakin doesn't have an order uh-huh. yoda has an order and he can just guidance anakin to trigger relevance immediately sure but anakin has to be like already where he needs to be for that to work yes no doubt but i mean like the 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 turns that anakin doesn't have an order is basically just yoda's one thing here's a random question can you guidance force joke no you cannot guidance is only does not include free actions okay specifically that is a very specific thing you cannot do any free actions with guys good to know uh, all right i don't know it's interesting i probably would have just tried it with like more beef instead of yoda but i don't know yoda and anakin together that seems yeah i don't it's, know it's, you it's know. a thing i don't know if it's a good thing but it's a thing it is yeah it's a, definitely a lot of eggs and a certain <laughs> basket <laughs> yes um but you know um it's yeah it's a thing uh it could be fun i don't know um i'm not really sure what you do with the other with the 200 points you get from yoda do you just like slap a bunch of wookies in there like what's your plan here no you it's like a it's like an anakin padme list except instead of going all in on the defensive tech you don't <laughs> and it gets you up to <laughs> it gets you up to nine activations it's here i made it the other day I see, I see, I it's see. uh let's see you get a clone commander in there you get padme in there you got a phase one with a z6 you got a phase one with an rps you got a phase two with a z6 and you still have 10 to 15 points depending on how you do upgrades to take a medic or oh, yeah. okay. whatever and it's nine activations it's basically anakin padme um Except you don't need Anakin near your dudes, and he's given into the dark side. He's given into the dark side. We don't do that here, Kyle. I know that you gave up the light to go run Blizzard Force for a very long time, but um, in this house, we we don't fall to the dark side. Look, man. I mean, people have been like, "Hey, let's take Vader as uh, a counter to all these." like clone commandos, experimental droids, whatever. I've got one problem with that, and that's Vader as an Empire unit. But you know what? He doesn't have to be an Empire unit. Maybe he yeah, can yeah. be a Republic unit. I mean, Anakin is just as... I shouldn't say just as good, but he's pretty close to just as good as Vader at killing clone commandos. He's he's actually better than Vader when it comes to like literally just swinging the lightsaber. Clearly, Vader has command cards that actually do things great things um that is a significant <laughs> ridiculous wow. amazing things and that is a very significant difference between the two of them but anakin is arguably more durable because of how gemso works and his access to dodges um i'm not as sure i agree with that statement okay i are you just talking about that because of the command card difference no i i i would argue that if if we're gonna make the argument that Anakin is more durable than Vader, okay, 
I don't think you can make that argument on paper. I think you can make that argument based on how Anakin is played generally. And okay, they... well, why not on paper? Just because of the wound difference? Like, what's the... I mean, Vader's effective health is significantly more. And... It's not so significantly more. It's I guess it depends on which Vader we're talking about. Are we talking about Commander Vader or Operative oh, Vader? Oh, are we splitting hairs now? About, we are splitting oh, hairs. Oh, now. we're talking about Operative Vader, the one nobody takes right now. <laughs> Look, Austin had Operative Vader in his Vader light list. I thought it was Commander Vader. Nope. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling that back up because I'm not, I'm not sure that that... It is an Operative Vader. All right, all right, all right. All right. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, yes, Commander <laughs> Vader is more durable than Anakin. I would okay. see that point. Yeah, okay, great. Is well, I, I assume <laughs> we were talking about Commander Vader because yeah. it's been a while since I've seen anybody it, play Operator. I think it's not as different as it appears, though, simply because of the dodge token access that Anakin has over Commander Vader. I, I hear you. Um, and the fact that you can kite Commander Vader after he burns burst to speed and you can't do that with Anakin. I think that is also fair. However, I think when we're having a conversation about Anakin Skywalker's durability, the cost of that flaw card is high. It is. Um, yeah. It is very, very high. You need, and... you need to take endurance and you need to follow the rules on the cards that you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Vader has no such restrictions. No, Vader does what Vader wants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's fair. Look, if I could take actual Vader and clones, one hundred percent, that is what I would be doing. But um, yo, I can't, can, so. can we talk for a second about uh, weird rules that we'd like to see be in the game? That okay, aren't because sure. I today, I am I am putting my foot down and saying that an edit to the rules has to be made, and that edit has to be that the five hundred and first. Support restrictions need to be changed to include clone commandos moving forward. And I think all of you with me watching this video, listening to it on, you know, what is it? Uh, Podbean or wherever. Yeah, iTunes. Send it into AMG. We are making a wave here. Clone commandos need to be usable in the 501st Battle Force. All that requires is a minor edit to like a PDF file. We're all square. Obviously, Delta Squad shouldn't be allowed there. However, I would love to be able to put a clone command. I I would love to be able to not have to play a bark. <laughs> a or an ATRT mic. Come on. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it it also fits with the theme of the five hundred first, which is like you know not just republic but republic like super elites um and you could actually just take all full arcs and clone commandos and like that seems like a hella fun thing how have we missed this uh i i spent a significant amount of time today trying to figure out if this is a thing that we can do canonically um the, apparently there are a lot of things in uh canon right now that at least has clone commandos working alongside the 501st specifically a fair apparently clone commandos were like in the temple while they were burning it with dark side anakin so okay. that fits um yep obviously that's like post fall anakin um Kyle yeah. Anakin, if you will. Yeah, right. Uh, can we and get, while we're at it, can we just let Anakin take some of Vader's command cards? Dude, I'm all for that battle. Just give me just give me three. Give me both one pips and Fear and Dead Men. No, no, no. Oh sorry, 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 sorry. Master of Evil. Sorry. There we go. There we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you obviously don't need the uh Dark Distance Sense, but yeah, because uh, he's already got that, but better. Um right. but Master of Evil is pretty good. Anyhow, I'm asking for it. Send your emails into AMG. If I don't see in their next interview with Will Schick or Pagani that they're going to talk about clone commandos in the 501st, I'm going to get set with the wall. <laughs> you have not done your job. <laughs> it would. It will be interesting to see, actually, like as units over time continue to get released, if 
the battle force pdfs get updated with things that would be like in canon appropriate for that battle force to have i think for the most part they're kind of self-contained but for example if they release like um savage right savage savage oppress yeah. uh or if they release like night sisters or whatever if if they would add those to shadow collective battle force i i assume they would otherwise like how would you play them um but i don't know i think i think it'd be interesting to see like how and when and if the battle force pdfs get updated to include like new units on their roster yeah i mean i think it seems like an obvious like easy sort of not this specifically though i do think this is also an auto easy win uh Uh, (laughs) um it seems like an easy thing to do obviously lfl probably has to sign off on it but like seems 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 like uh i don't know i'm trying to think of like a unit that that is the case outside of like maybe clone commandos um that we've got like we we don't have anything in the game that kind of fits that description right now right i don't think so i don't think so yeah so i don't know yeah i i agree um you know if we ever get like ewok gliders or something they better get added to the ewok battle force you know yeah um but i feel like that's some one of the i think one of the things with how the I think so far the way the battle forces, at least other than the original four, have been designed is that they kind of like they're like, here's all the stuff. You're not really getting any more yeah. because it's kind of self-contained for the right. most part. Um so yeah, I'll just be I'll be curious if that remains the case or not. Yeah. Give us the Gungans, give us them now. I would unironically play Gungans. I I would too. I bet they'd be pretty good in, into experimental droids. Yeah, they probably have all the ion. Mm-hmm. All the ion. So right. anywho, any... send send your letters into AMG. Clone Commandos, five of first. I want to play it in the next tournament. There you go. All right. Maybe I'll maybe I'll play poison in the next tournament. I have a distinct lack of rad cannons to make this work, but here's the real question. When's the next tournament you're gonna play in, Kyle? I think that it is June 29th. What's well, June 29th? That's the formerly Huzzah, now Dragon's Concord oh. uh, tournament. Oh dang. I actually uh sorry. Yes, you are right. I I are you going to that? Uh maybe. The answer is okay. maybe. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but I actually had something that I like, very definitely should uh, um, talk about. I'm actually running a summer camp for kids for Star Wars Legion this summer. Uh, Does, yeah. Okay, go on. So we're running it at Game Castle College Park. Um, you can find summer it. Summer camp implies event, right? that they're there for like most of the day. Is that they are? Okay. I'm I'm running it from like nine to five Monday through Friday in like a week in June or July. I. I don't remember the exact dates off the top okay. of my head. Uh-huh. Um, but like the way that we've set it up is that basically, you know, you pay for the summer camp like normal. Your kid gets a Battle Force box and an essentials kit. And then like on Monday, we assemble everything. On Tuesday, we start painting it. And like on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like everybody plays a bunch of games. Um, so if you, you're in the area and want your kids to learn from a scoundrel, uh <laughs> You can send them to Game Castle College Park. That's uh, a really cool idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. They definitely they asked me about it a couple months ago, and I was like, "Sure, let's try it." Uh, there's already a couple of people signed up, so um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I think we we'll probably try and um, maybe get some like sweet all arts and stuff to like give away and like prize kits and stuff. Hey, if you need some swag donated, let me know because oh, I yeah, yeah have that. <laughs> so me too <laughs> uh yeah no definitely um and uh anywho i just figured i'd uh plug that a little bit i've been meaning to do that the last like two weeks and i have forgotten every time uh so that is a thing that is happening all right awesome yeah well 
Um, if you want to get rid of your kids for a week, Kyle, you let me know. <laughs> I think that I don't know if you have minimum age requirements. I, I think not, the minimum age is like nine or ten. Yeah, they for, don't meet those. for good reason. Yes. <laughs> Look, if you want to be exposed to my uh, uh, feral children for that <laughs> yeah, long of a period. Yeah. Last time I was at your house, your son was just like climbing all over me. <laughs> I yes, was like, he... hey, man, personal space. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And he loves to talk to adults. He... Yeah, that was very apparent. <laughs> yep. He, yep. He can't get enough of it. He will talk to all the strangers yeah. as many as possible about <laughs> everything that you could possibly imagine. Um Whenever we're out in public, I mean, I'm I'm like a, a kind of an introvert, and he is clearly uh, not not not, yeah. and it, it like it makes me uncomfortable because he'll just he'll just walk up to like random people and start telling them about his monster truck or whatever, and it's like, all right, buddy, I he mean, might he, grow, like, he might grow up, but I don't know, I don't we'll think see. so. He's got no boundaries at all. <laughs> so. Well, he's gonna learn them someday. We'll see when that day is. Yeah, I mean, I I think that'll serve him over time. He, you know, but it's it's definitely amusing as a I guess he's now six as a six year old just literally talking to anybody about anything. Right. So it's a good skill to have. It is a good skill to have, but yeah, I don't think that you would want him at your um week long Legion camp. Five or six, <laughs> we'll give him five or six years. We'll yeah. See. You know. my daughter on the other hand is very uh she'd be great in that environment um, when she's a little bit older so yeah uh, we might run it again uh, our intent is to run it every year after this we'll see okay um assuming it goes well yep who knows i might pull my hair out on day two we'll see <laughs> <laughs> um, but... well i think it's a great idea and i wish you luck thank you appreciate it yeah mm-hmm. and for those for those that want to come to the dragon's concord tournament on june 29th um i actually don't know where you can find the sign up links for that i'm sorry i'm doing a terrible job plugging this tournament that i'm going to um i'm sure it's in the local nova facebook's um, and discords and stuff but yeah let me let me see i think it probably it's on game up link it's a summer legion tournament at dragons concord too yeah and there you go i don't know if they have a link in the game up link for the actual like sign up if they don't they should if you're listening to this there and is. you're organizing it there is great okay yes. yep all right well there you go just search for a done game up link yep there are 18 spots left it's about to be 17 because i have not actually bought my ticket yet so. there you go there you go uh it's only 15 dollars uh, i've been there before um there yeah it's it's decent for sure and i am confident the tables will be good because i know everybody is bringing them so. yep yeah this will be the local nova crew so yeah all right well, um, without any final thoughts, I'm Kyle. I'm Mike. And uh, I definitely did that out of order, but stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs>